Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it is time for our next Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 455. I have got brand new Sizzix for you. So I'm gonna probably start with that because if you've got a big shot machine, a big kick machine, a vagabond machine, a switch machine, a big shot plus machine, a big shot pro machine, you may want what I've got sitting right here for you and it is so new. It is so new that I'm in early this morning, Friday morning, to tape this class because last night, ta-da, it's Taylor drove halfway from Lake Forest to Canyon Country, and we drove from Canyon Country halfway to Lake Forest. We met in the middle, did a handoff, and then drove home. <laughs> That's how new the product is. <laughs> So I've got that for you. I've got the latest and greatest from Simply Define. That's my collection of dies. This is the next release. I've got some simple and easy and fun techniques for you. I've got a very unique paper from Spellbinders that is on an amazing value for you. So just a lot of fun and joy in this YouTube. I am sure of that. And if you are the newest of crafters, you're going to find something here that you will be able to implement in your creativity right away. And if you've been crafting like me forever, well, hopefully this jogs something in your memory that you forgot about, or maybe you pick up a new tip or trick. Who knows, or maybe you just sit and we have a great time together. All right, so I wanna give you a few updates. I've got a lot to do today, so I'm not gonna to talk too long. You're like, say what? I'm like, yeah, I've got a lot to do today. Um, a few updates. All switch machines that are white have been shipped and we do have tracking numbers. So we've been updating those, uh, those orders and gosh, by the time we got the tracking numbers, you may already have your machine in hand. I don't know, <laughs> but we're updating your tracking numbers in your account. So you can always take a look when you get an email that says your order has shipped. That means we received the tracking number and we'll put that in the order status so you can see it. All of you who have a black uh, switch machine, Sizzix switch machine that has a mid-June estimated ship date, that's being pushed into early July. So actually, probably mid-July. Those will go out about mid-July. So if you still have a black switch machine that you got for $169.99, Yours are going to be shipping a little bit later on. We're not ready to send those over yet. But now that we have the tracking numbers for all of the switch machines that have gone over, I'm going to start working on sidekick machines. So if you have a Sizzix sidekick machine, uh, keep your eye out. You'll see that your order will go from payment received to awaiting fulfillment. And once it's gone to awaiting fulfillment, once we get the tracking number back, it will change to shipped with the tracking number. You will know I have sent your order over once your order goes to awaiting fulfillment. And this is very much like the switch machines. I have to do them at after hours at night, so be patient, but they will get to you, I promise. And before, before the warehouse sale orders even start, so you guys are doing great. Okay, what else do I have for you today? oodles of product to play with and I'm even going to incorporate some of the stickers from GG that you guys ordered because I know you're going to have extras. So I, I'm even going to play with those today and I promised that I was going to be using the Find It bling, those beautiful blings. I've got those for you as well. So before we get there, I want to do winner, winner, chicken dinner. Are we ready? These... Oh my gosh. So first off, James, my SMS guy, James, apologized when um, when he saw what name was selected. <laughs> he says, oh, mom, you're going to have a good time with this one. Yep, I am. <laughs> so these two lovely ladies have won $25 to Scrapbooking Made Simple, and that's because they posted a comment below. If you are live chatting with us, the live chat does not count. Got to post the comment below me. We will approve it. You will not see it immediately. We will approve it and then we will have our software randomly select two people every week. They win a $25 gift card and both of these lovely ladies have done that. First one's easy. First one, Susan. Hello, Susan Davenport. You were easy peasy. Thank you very much. Susan Davenport, wahoo kachoo, you are a winner, winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and you have a $25 gift card already in your online account. 
Go spend it on anything that makes your heart happy. Maybe it's some of this. Maybe you, well, don't buy Stacy tape with it. Buy something frivolous, something you wouldn't normally buy for yourself that you've always wanted to try. It's free money. Spend it. Congratulations, Susan Davenport. But you're not our only winner. No, no, no. Sherry. Sherry's easy enough with the E-R-I. Yamauchi. Yeah, Sherry Yamauchi. Am I close, Sherry? Am I anywhere close to that? Yamauchi? Sherry, is that you? I hope it's you and I hope I came close to it. I tried. <laughs> and God loves a trier. I tried. So Sherry, congratulations. You two are a winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm so happy for the both of you. We've got Sherry and we've got Susan. You both get a winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. Are you ready? Well, I hope you are because you should be doing it with me. You just won $25. Yay. Okay. You're a winner. Chicken dinner. You're a winner. Chicken dinner. Wahoo. Cut you for you. Congratulations to the both of you. I hope you enjoy whatever it is you spend your money on, your winnings on. And if you want a chance to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner, just to post a comment down below. It can be about anything, about your family, about your friends, about your fur baby, about your job, about whatever. Just keep it kind. As long as it's nice and it's kind, we'll post it. <laughs> An SMS guy, James, he's the one who approves them. And sometimes he writes back to you. He's like, can I answer? I said, if you've got time, go right ahead. <laughs> but make sure you've got time. So, <laughs> all right, you guys, I think we're going to tilt down. We're going to get started for today. I have got watercolor pencils. I've got Simply Defined. I've got specialty paper from Spellbinders. I've got Find It Trading Bling. I've got Leftover Bling from the GG stickers just a little bit of everything for you today and hopefully something that will spark your creativity and want to want, want to make you go into your space wherever that is whether it's a huge giant room or it's your dining room table or it's a little desk and just just make something pretty just make something i hope that that's what this does this encourages you just to sit and make something all right i'm going to tilt on down i'm going to start with the Sizzix. That's where we're going to start with, and then we'll move on to, to the dies and, and the Spellbinders paper, okay? Down we go. I suppose I should show you samples, too. Hold on. Let me zoom on in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Down. I need to learn to get my tummy out of the image. <laughs> okay. So, this is a brand new... Simply Defined Dye, right? Ooh, and that is Spellbinder paper. But then we go here. Ooh, and let me kind of zoom in. It's almost like it's been diamond dotted in places, right? Oh, but no, that's the Find It Bling. And let me show you how easy it is to work with that. Uh-huh. One tool is going to change your life. <laughs> You're like, really? One tool? Yes, one tool. And then we've got, we're going to end up somewhere around here. Isn't that pretty? All right. So, six different dyes. But before I get there, I'm going to talk about the Sizzix new product that they have out. They are cutting pads. In fact, I'm gonna take this off so it doesn't glare so much. That means one of my pads is gonna. Okay, new Sizzix cutting pads. So cutting plates, so what you make the sandwich with. But this is an assorted size. You're like, an assorted size, what do you mean? Well, you're going to get one standard plate like we normally get like we normally sell but you're going to get also what looks like a six by six plate and then an extended kind of thinner plate this will not work in your sidekick it is too thin this is meant to go into the big shot machine this is not for your sidekick so they came out with these three sizes. So they kind of chopped this one up 
chop these apart and when you put them together they're the same size as your regular why would they do this well, they did this mainly because they know that dies now are coming in so many different sizes and so many different shapes that maybe you just need a plate this size to go through. Maybe you don't want to use one of your big plates. It's to help keep down the wear and tear on your plates. It's use the right plate, use the right size for the, the die that you're working with. And, and that way you keep your warpage down, you keep your your bowing down, you keep the you know the, the usage, overall usage, because you're not using the same one time and time again. You're using what works best for what you're doing. Now when I saw these, I was thoroughly intrigued. I was like, oh, that's a really great idea. I love it. But why are you only giving them one this size, one this size, and then here? I said, they need two of everything. And they're like, no, 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 you don't need two of everything. And I'm saying, yes, 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 you do. And I want to kind of show you why. So when you're die cutting, I'm going to bring my machine on over and maybe back up just a little bit. When you're die cutting, normally we have like a cut plate. So this plate here, that's crystal clear. That's what this used to be. This used to be crystal clear. Now it's been cut into so many times that it's started to cloud over and it's got a little warpage to it, not much. But when it started its life, it started its life beautiful like this. And these two plates line up and you put them on your machine and they're the same size as your platform and you send them on through and it's easy peasy. But with these new plates, well, you've got these new sizes. And you know, as long as you, you line them up kind of in the front, sometimes it's gonna take them easy. But sometimes if you bring it back here and you're sending it through, it's not gonna grab all at the same time, especially with this size. So this size, you're not gonna put into your platform, into your machine, going parallel to the cutting. That's not gonna, that's not gonna, it's gonna be too hard to fish it through to get it through. It's gonna be too hard to get it to grab. It's really meant to go perpendicular. The problem with that is that it's not the same width as your platform. It's much smaller, a little over maybe two inches, two and a half inches. So it has a harder time grabbing because your roller's grabbing right here to begin with. And then it hits this and it's got to grab this size as well. And if you put it right up to it, by the time you put your paper in and your die in, what tends to happen is that it tends to um, push back with the die because it's just not the same size. So I'm like, well, why didn't you give them two of everything? Two of these and two of these. That way, if they wanted to use this size, easy peasy. Everything lines up together. Everything's going to feed in together. Something's not going to go through before that's bigger and maybe give this an opportunity to slide back or not take or move. You know, let's do that. And then let's give them two of these. Because again, when they line up and they're the same size, feeding them through the machine is so much easier than trying to make sure that when you've got them here, the smaller on top of the larger, they don't, when you hit the roller and the roller hits your die and your paper, they don't start to push back as you're going in. So I said, you know, let's just do this. Let's, let's make it a two pack. <laughs> let's do a twofer. And since we're the first to have them, they said, okay, so we're going to send you, we have it so that you're going to get two packs. So you have, you're going to get a whole new set of regular cutting pads, yay. But then you're going to get a whole set of the small and a whole set of the medium, which means then you can make one of these your do not cut plate and use this as your cut plate. Why do we have a do not cut plate? Because it keeps... It keeps one platform 
from warping. Your top platform, if you constantly use a do not cut plate on the top, so I'm never going to have a die cut into this plate. See how lots of dies have cut into this plate? I'm never going to have that. This plate is always going to stay as clean as it can be. Now it might cloud because it's going through the machine, but it's not. We want to have as few cuts in it as possible. Have I accidentally cut into a do not cut plate? Yes, it's okay. I'm just trying to avoid that. And what it does is it keeps this plate, this top plate, completely flat or as close to flat as possible, allowing you to put your your sandwich through and send it through easier. When you get a few plates together that have warped, you're now trying to kind of slide them in together kind of underneath so that it will grab them because they've, they've warped. A do not cut plate avoids that and all a do not cut plate is is a clean plate that's not cut into as little as possible. So you're going to start with two more brand new sets because you're going to get two packs. And each pack has a large, a medium, and a small. And we're going to send you two packs. So you're going to get a whole new set of clean plates, full size. But then you're going to get a whole new set of mediums and a whole new set of smalls. These were brought out to, for the switch machine because that pressure is so much that maybe you just need a little set so that you're not warping or using your big plates as much as you probably are right now. The right tool for the right job, the right size plates for the right die, the right size stamping block for the right stamp. It's the same thought process. And if you always keep one as your do not cut, then when this one gets old and tattered and ratty and breaking and cracking, all you have to do is buy a new set you keep this one as your do not cut and you've got a whole new one ready to go because they're sold uh, one each per pack. This time we're going to do, we're going to send you two packs so you have everything that you need. So for my dies, uh, come on out. For my dies, look at that. The mediums are going to be great. Mediums should work fine for my dies. I could use the large if I want. I can't use the small. The small is too small. However, if you look, I've given you this cute little birdie to go with the birdhouse, right? Do I really want to use my big plates? I've always had to in the past. Do I want to use my big plates on that? when now I have the opportunity to just, just whip them through on a small plate. Less wear, less tear, and on all your plates because you're not using one again and again. You're using the right size plate for the right size die. Okay, so when you get these, there is going to be two sets because again, you get one small, one medium, and then one large. So to give you two of everything, we have to send you two packs. And we put them on sale. I think we took 30% off. Now 30% off plates is an amazing value. Let me tell you, even if it was just one set, it's an amazing value. But I really do believe because there can be an issue putting a smaller plate on top of a larger plate and getting it to go through so that it doesn't push the plate back because it's feeding in at different different times and at different widths. Just have two. Bam, you're done. Easy peasy. So that is new from Sizzix and we're the first ones to have it. I don't even know if they have them up on their site yet. They might have them as a coming soon, but well, <laughs> soon is now. <laughs> If you're here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Okay, let me put this away. So that's the first thing about the cutting mats that are the cutting plates that I wanted to show you. I like the idea. I like the concept that you use the right size plate for the die you're working with, giving you options. And again, they really did bring it out with the switch in mind. 
because people are putting their plates through and that pressure is warping those really big plates and maybe all they're doing is something teeny tiny. Now you have options. Lots of options. Full size, medium, small, and if you've got a plus machine or a pro machine or a switch machine, then you have even the bigger plates. Use the plates that work best for the die that you're using, just like you would a block for your stamping. All right, so let's start to play. I think the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about, again, I'm gonna to move to the Spellbinders paper because it's a little different than anything else. We have got Spellbinders for you. We're only selling it in the bundle. The bundle, you gotta get the gold and the silver. There is no open stock on this paper. That's it. 10 sheets of mirror gold, 10 sheets of mirror silver, and they retail for $9.99, and we're doing both of them for $11.99. So this would normally cost you 10 bucks, and this would normally cost you 10 bucks. We're doing the two together for $11.99. But is it really mirror paper? I'm not 100% sure that it is. You're like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Let me pull out a sheet or two, pull out a couple sheets to play with today. Is it mirror paper? Hmm, that's a good question. Cause I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> when I think of mirror paper, I think of a reflection, getting a, a strong reflection back or high gloss and shiny. I don't know if this is mirror paper. Does it matter? No, this is, this is almost in a way better than a mirror paper. This is almost like a foiled paper. It will hold, I mean, it will hold its position. So a mirror paper is not gonna do that. This is a, almost a, a foiled paper. And, and what's unique about it is that it's double-sided foiled. Most papers that are, oh, I didn't pull out very much. Oh, pulled out a couple sheets. Most papers that are a mirror paper are white on the back because they lay that mirror image down. It's a coating on top of white paper. This, this gives you two sides. Do you know what that means? For me, that means, well, one, if I want to do something that is three-dimensional, it's going to be beautiful on both sides because I've got that element. I've got it uh, foiled or mirror. It's really not mirrored. It's more foiled on both sides. But two, if I do something and I don't like it, I just have to flip it over. I haven't lost anything because this paper has two sides. Right? I mean, it's very unusual to see a paper, of a, a specialty paper. See, and you can see, you can see it's kind of dented right there. The more I play with it, the more it'll, it'll get little dents in it. It will hold some of its shape. It's not meant to be, they don't call it a foil paper, but I think it's more of a foil paper than it is a mirror paper. It's very cool paper. And for the price, it's amazing. So I'm gonna start with this today. And... I think, I think I will just start with the birdhouse. So I'm gonna die cut, my first die is our birdhouse die. Now these are very open and very whimsical and not, not childish, but not totally sophisticated by any stretch of the imagination. They're a little more joyful, a little more fun and have some opportunities to add some bling into them. So a couple curves and curly cues, but I wanna show you how easy it is to use this paper, even if you are just starting out. There's my little tweet tweet birdie. So I'm gonna pull this die and let's cut a piece. I think I'm gonna work with the gold right now. Let's work with the piece of the gold. So it is eight, uh, eight and a half by 11. Okay, that's good to know, eight and a half by 11, as opposed to an A4 size. So I'm just gonna zoop this on down. Okay. 
Well, that was not the best cut. You know what? Now I'm going to have to do it this way because I did not do a good job. You think I can get it out? Ooh, that's tight. Nope. I'm just going to go this way. Just to be on the safe side. Now I have options here. Again, I could pull out my medium plate and use my medium plate for it. My paper's a little bit big for my medium plate, so I can just trim that down just a hair bit. And instead of using my large plate, I can use my medium plate and I can even put my die at a slight angle. I even have that opportunity. Put my top plate on. And send it through my Big Shot machine. So it's up to you. Do you want to use a medium plate for this? Or do you want to use a full set? Before you didn't have an option. Now you do. Now I might save my full set for longer, bigger things. Gosh, I might be using these mediums every bit as much as I use my full set. All right, so I'm gonna send it on through. Hmm. This is an intricate die. Now that I'm thinking about it, my dies are very intricate. Ooh, intricate, intricate. I'm gonna absolutely need to use a precision base plate. So I'm still gonna use that medium plate on the top but I do have to use my precision base plate to make this die go, absolutely. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, definitely. So I can choose to use my medium on the top if I want to. I can go back to use my large and just use my large do not cut if I want to. Totally up to me, I have options. It's a do not cut so it's not gonna hopefully warp. I'm gonna try not to cut into it and I'm gonna send it through. So my dies are super intricate. And, um, and a precision base plate is needed. A precision base plate is a tool that allows you to cut intricate dies in your Sizzix machines. It has directions on one side and it has a chrome plate on the other. If you are using this and you can read the directions, I need you to stop. I need you to turn it around, flip it over, and do it upside down. So for a wafer die, which is what most dies are these days and my dies are the sandwich in your in your big shot machine is your base platform your solo shim your precision base plate your paper and then your die and last thing you choose what size plate you want to put over the top of it and i'm going to send it on through so this die is going to bite into the paper and bite into that precision base plate and cut that paper out. Okay, so let's take a look and see. See, it's two-sided. <laughs> Usually I turn that over and it's white, but it's not. It's, it's, a foil, it's almost like a foiled paper. And I'm going to guess that that cut pretty darn good. Now, I might save this because I might be able to get some sentiments or some little flowers or something out of that. And because it's a specialty paper, I might just hang on to it. Now, you can see it left a mark in my do not cut plate. You can see that it left an embossing mark. And that's okay. That's going to happen with your precision base plate. It didn't cut into it, though, and that's what's important. I'm trying to keep it from warping for as long as possible just so it makes die cutting a little bit easier. Now this paper holds together really nicely. I mean, you could almost paper piece everything back in. and it almost looks like an embossing. This paper, again, because I think it's more foiled than mirror, it holds together beautifully. But I don't want to do paper piecing today. 
and do something else. So, all my little curly cues. Come on, little curly cue. There we go. See what happens when you use the precision base plate? Easy peasy. All the little pieces just kind of fall right on out, which is what you're looking for. You're not struggling to pull little bits and pieces out. Oodles of little curly cues. And I think I've got almost everything out. Now I wonder, because this is foil, I wonder if we have to have the precision base plate. I'm going to cut it one more time just because I can. And I am going to use the medium plates. And I am going to use the foil mirror paper from Spellbinders. And let's see what we get not using a precision base plate. Because this foil seems to cut uh, a little differently than typical paper. All we can do is try, and all it can do is not work. And I'd rather not work on my paper than you try it on yours. Well, we're going to go in. I'm going to run it this way, I think. Put it on a little bit of a diagonal. And let's see. I don't know if it's going to work or not. But I like the size of the plate, that's for sure. All right, so I'm going to bring my machine back over, only this time I'm going to get rid of my precision base plate. And we're going to see what happens. I've got it on my I've got it on my base platform. I've got it on my solo shim. And then my two medium cutting plates. And let's see. Whoa! There we go. I don't know, should I run it back just to be safe? my gosh. Okay, I think we don't need a precision base plate. <laughs> and look at that beautiful cut it put in there. It's like, a, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a perfect etching of that die. <laughs> love these. <laughs> love the size. Love that I'm not using my big ones again and again and now I have options and by having options it means that I'm just going to use I'm going to use each plate less giving each one of them more life wow that cut beautifully okay so now let me just get rid of some of this like no don't get rid of it yeah I have two so now I have two of these but that's okay I wanted to see if it was going to work This paper is, is unique. It's different. It's different than anything we've ever carried before. And when I ordered it, I ordered it as mirror paper, thinking that's what I was going to get. But, oh, was I surprised when I opened it up and started to play with it. I like it better because it's got that foilness, the foil that allows you to cut through it. Who knew? And it's double-sided. To me, that's a game changer. The fact that it's the same color both sides. So if you're doing Christmas ornaments or pretty little uh, snowflakes that you want to dangle, now you don't have to worry. You don't have a white side on the back and a, and a silver side on the front. I love this for that. I think it's the first paper we've ever had that is a foil or mirror type paper where it's the same on both sides. All right, so now I've got two of these. Cute, right? 
but I want to make it into something more than what it is. So I'm going to grab um, a piece of, let's just grab some paper towels. And I'm going to put my die right down on a paper towel. And because this is foily mirror paper, <laughs> not sure, it's, I don't want to miss misname it, you know, because it does say mirror on the packaging, I just would not have called it mirror paper, but that's me. Mirror to me means you've got a high gloss, you've got a reflective finish, and um, this feels more like foil. All right, so I've got all my little bits and pieces out, and I'm going to just be on a paper towel. What am I going to do with this? I'm going to color it. Because it is a non-porous finish because the coating on the paper I know it starts as white I can see it as white the coating on the paper is a is a plastic something or other a foily plastic something or other but it makes it non porous that means that if I were to stamp a dye based ink on this it's not going to dry a dye based ink goes into paper beautifully. So a Hero Arts or a Tim Holtz or um, most of those are a Lawn Fawn are, are a dye based ink. A Memento is a dye based ink. I need to use something that will dry on non porous materials. And what does that lead me to? Something alcohol based, a Bic marker, a Sharpie marker. Uh, alcohol inks regardless of who you buy them from or we also have Aussie Andrews alcohol markers for $1.99 about the same price as a Bic and Sharpie but you get two nibs you get a brush tip and you get a bullet tip so I'm gonna go in and because I can I'm gonna color this let's take a brown Let's see what this brown looks like. And I can go in and I can just change the color just by coloring right over that gold. I can make it something different than what it was but I'm not covering up that gold. Meaning the ink is transparent. So that beautiful gold essence is going to come through. You're still going to have that shine and that metallic foily look. Only now instead of in gold, my birdhouse is going to be in a brown. And you don't have to do this with Aussie Andrews alcohol markers if you've got Bix or Sharpies. That's going to work too. And I'm just going to come in here. And put a little color down. Let's see, I don't know if you'll be able to see it against the, oh sure you can. So you still see the metallic, the, the gloss, the foil look coming through. Only now it's not gold, now it's in brown. Let's do the little window, I missed that. And because these markers are so inexpensive, you're okay using them. This is just another use for alcohol-based markers. And if you've already got Sharpies or Bix at home, use them. All right, so I've got my house done. Now let's do my flowers. And maybe I do my flowers in a red. So not a lot of talent here, not a lot of thought. doesn't take a lot of effort and you don't have to be a seasoned crafter to do this. This is a way to change something 
so simply but so effectively with very little work. There's a lot of bang for your buck in this technique. And I've got some flowers down here. You could let the kids do this. Put down paper towels, give them some Bix or some Sharpies, and let them have at it. You can pre-die cut, and they can color. Okay, let's see where I'm at. Look at the change in it. Let's do maybe the little vines in green. You don't have a lot of time. You need to get something done for somebody. This is an easy way to make something look amazing because it looks like you foiled the card. But how did you get all of those different colors? <laughs> well, they don't need to know. That's our secret. I think that was supposed to be red there, but I'm going to make it green anyway. And just come in and do all my little, my little lines. Now, would I use my Copic markers if I had Copic markers to do this? No, I wouldn't. Copics are very, the ink is very expensive. It's an alcohol-based ink. I don't know that it's any better than what Ozzy Andrew has in his pens. I know they have a lot more colors, but for $1.99, you just can't go wrong. Okay, last one. And I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave my frame gold. So hopefully I didn't miss, oh, I did, I missed right there. Let's see, hopefully I didn't miss too many places. It's a totally different look. Let's see if I've got a piece of white paper I can put it on. In just a matter of minutes, I was able to take it and totally change it just by using alcohol ink markers. Remember, it started started like this, but ended like this, and you still get that metallic foily coming through the ink because the ink is transparent. Look at how beautiful it is. It does, it looks like it's been professionally foiled but all you did was color. Scribble, scribble, scribble. All right, let's try it on the silver. So I'm gonna hold those two off and I'm gonna keep them. Let's try it on the silver and let's get a different die. Let's try this one. And I'm gonna continue to use my little ones and let's grab some silver paper. I feel like that's two sheets, but it's one and it's, it's double sided.
Oh, I probably am not close at all, but that's okay. Am I too narrow? Ooh, just by a hair of a chinny chin chin. All right, I'm going to give it a whirl. I need to cut a little bit off the side just so it doesn't hang past my platform. Give it a little bit of a twist. Put my do not cut plate on. And let's see what happens. I'm not gonna use a precision base plate. Send it on through, and let's see what happens. Cracks and creaks are okay. Mm, I don't think it cut all the way through there. I'm going to send it back. Tried not to send it back to see what happens, but I don't think it cut all the way through on that one. Let's bring my machine back on over, send it on through, and let's see. Plate down, a little bit of an angle so I get a few less cracks and creaks. Top plate do not cut on, and let's send it on through and see what happens. Oh yeah, that looks better. Usually that's white on that side, but not with the Spellbinders paper. <laughs> I opened it up and it was this huge surprise. I'm like, oh, well, who knew? Oh, and you can see how well it holds together. I mean, you can almost keep the entire thing together if you wanted. But let's pull out some of these pieces. Lots of little curly cues. But look at how nicely they just fall out, surprisingly, with no precision base plate. And I think that has everything to do with it being foiled or a foil feel. some of these big pieces. Careful, 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 Stacy. See, look at it. It just kind of holds its place. <laughs> so all I have to do is push it back down to where it's supposed to be. But a mirror paper doesn't typically do that. Got this one just about done. See, that was no, they're still not cut all the way through. Still not cut all the way through. Let's get this one out. Hmm. All right, I'm going to cut it again one more time. I'm still not going to use a precision base plate, and if I have to cut it a third time to use a precision base plate, I will. But I'm going to try one more time. This time I'm going to do a rotate. And we'll see what we get. And if it doesn't work, I'll do it again, and we'll use the precision base plate. But that first one cut like a dream. So let's go there. at a little bit of an angle. Top plate on my do not cut plate. I'm using the medium size. Sounds
sounds good, but this time I am going to rotate. So I just did a 90 degree rotation so that it hits the roller in a different way. Still no precision base plate. I think it's okay. I don't know, should we run it through just one more time? It looks good though, doesn't it? What if we just do it one more time? This time I'll do this and that. And if not, we'll go back to using a precision base plate. Let's see what we got. Look at how well it holds itself together. I mean, to me, that's craziness. Oh, this time the center's did it, did it, did it, yes. Okay, did it, did it, did it. That one, yes. Pull my little curly cues out. And, yeah cut there too, pull my little curly cues out and it cut there and it cut there and those are falling out and that one came out, well happy day maybe it just needed that rotation which is what I normally do with a precision base plate anyway but look at all of it falling out All right, I think I've got enough of it out for us to play with. All the little curly cues. The SMS girls are like, really? <laughs> but I like how they look. And there, okay. All right, I think I've got enough out for us to look. So I was able to cut it without a precision base plate. I did have to send it through and rotate, absolutely. But this foil paper has a different, has a, um, it's just, it feels different, it behaves different, it acts different. And I know it says mirror on the, on the packaging, but I'm not so sure mirror is the right word for it. Now let's, ooh, let's color. So let's see what it looks like on the silver. And I'm just going to do the same thing, and then we will move on to the next technique, but I want to see how we look on silver. See, and it just, I mean, mirror paper doesn't do that. <laughs> Okay, so what colors do we want to use? How about maybe some pinks? And I can just go right over the top. So could have I have colored my entire sheet of um, mirror paper from Spellbinders and then die cut? like color in waves of color and then die cut. Yeah, sure, I could have, absolutely. I could have taken it and 
done a bunch of pink and then maybe some other color and another color. The problem is I want to be specific where I put my colors and I don't want to have my leaves pink. I want them to be green. Ooh. And if I do it this way, you really don't have a say where you're, you know, you take your pink down or your green and then maybe add another little color down at the bottom. Then you're going to have pink leaves and, and your, your colors are going to more be in a wave of a color as opposed to being specific. So that's why I die cut first when I want this because I want it to be specific where I put my color. Now let's go over here and we'll do this one pink. And it's really just a scribble, scribble, scribble. And then maybe, maybe I want to add some purple to it. Can I do that? Just some purple right over the top of the pink. No rhyme, no reason, just going. Oh, pretty. And then maybe my green, maybe I do this green first, which is a little bit lighter of a green. And I come in and just color, color, color. And I'm just doing my pretty little leaves. Let's see where we're at so far. It's so easy and it's just scribble, scribble, scribble. And maybe I want my, my little fleurs a little darker green. Let's see if this is a darker green. Oh yeah. And I'm just on a paper towel, just so I don't get it all over. The ink absorbs pretty quickly into the paper towel, so I'm not gonna have it all over the sides of my hands. Um, if it was on my craft mat, the ink would, I would be able to get it all up on sides of my hands. And it's easier for me to see what I'm coloring on a paper towel. So time is of the essence. You need to get something done quickly. You just take your die cuts out, get your Spellbinder mirror foilish paper <laughs> die cut, and literally in no time at all, just a matter of a few minutes. Up to if you want to do the the frame or not. But we started. Started here. Ended here. Right? pretty on black or on white. And because the ink is transparent, you still get that, that metallic foily feel to it. 
I just used easy coloring. So if you're a newbie, this is easy. Piece of cake. You've got this. Okay, so let's do... Come on over. Oh, these little curly cues. <laughs> they get caught on everything. <laughs> but they're so cute. <laughs> so we've got that one. And we've got that one. Gold, silver. You choose. Well, actually, you don't have to choose. You're going to get both. <laughs> All right, let me throw that away. All right, let's move on. So I've done those two. Now I think I'm going to do this one. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this one. Okay, put my pins away. And we're going to cut the next. And I'm going to keep with my my silver and my gold. I think I'm going to do this one in silver. So this is the next one I have for you. The next Simply Defined die from this release. And let's put that under there. This is a true A2 size die, so it is a full A2 size. I know some people are calling them cover plates, but it's a, whatever it is you're calling it, it is a true A2 size die. And let's do this one in the silver. And I'm gonna try again without a precision base plate and see what happens. I know some of you don't have precision base plates, and if I was using regular cardstock, I wouldn't even try it. But with this paper, it seems to work. So I've got my cut plate on the bottom, which you can see, clearly see has now been cut into. I'm using the medium size. Just do a slight rotation so I don't get the thump. So it's pretty darn intricate. So we'll hold our breath. I feel like that just needs to come down just a hair a bit. So we'll hold our breath and see what happens, but I'm gonna go forward. And then I'm going to reverse, so I'm going to flip it, do a 90 degree flip right there. And all that does is it allows the roller to hit your die in a new and unique way. That's all it does. Let's it hit the roller. See, it didn't take it right at the same time. Oh, let me pull that off. There we go. Pull that off and send it back through. I think I'm too far at the bottom, but we'll see. See, that looks, that looks really good, doesn't it? That looks like it cut just fine, right? throw caution to the wind but look at how everything is just falling out yeah everything just fell right out that's a happy day 
This would be great paper to paper piece with because everything just kind of stays where it was. <laughs> All right, what are we going to do with it this time? This time we're going to bring in some of the bling from Find It and some of the bling, the leftover bling from Gigi. that we used last week because you're going to have leftover bling. Those little bling stickers, they gave you so much that I thought I would just use them this time because, well, you're going to have more of what you, you've got them on the way to you, so you might as well see all the different ways you can use them. And look at that. I don't even know if I'm gonna. I don't even know if I'm gonna color it. All right, let's play. So let me get all of this away, and I'm gonna pull out my sticky dots. So I'm gonna pull out sticky dots, and maybe we do it on. We do it on black paper. What are sticky dots? Sticky dots are a tool to adhere. It's an adhesive that allows you to take really intricate dies or small things that are difficult to glue down and it lets you glue them, adhere them to your paper without any problem at all. On this sheet, here, there's nothing. But on this sheet, there's hundreds of thousands of little micro dots, micro glue dots. Look at, you can see it's holding to my finger. And those micro glue dots allow you to put your die cut down close it up and give a good rub. Now, anywhere that there is a piece of that paper, that die cut, those little sticky dots are going to adhere, but all the open spaces where there isn't any paper, those sticky dots are going to remain behind, which means you can use these again and again and again, because really all I'm getting is sticky dots on the outline of this die. Any place there's open places, they're going to stay behind. So give a nice rub, and then you pull up. And then you tape down a few little straggler fallout pieces. You just stick it on down. And just like that, you've glued down an intricate die. Now, do you have time to move this? Yes. You can pull this up and you can reposition it. But once it sets, it sets and that's it. Look at how easy was that. Sticky dots. Uh, you have, there's 10 to a package. They're eight and a half by 11 sheets, 10 to a package, $10.99. And you use them again and again until there's no dots left on your sheet. So let's see, what am I gonna do with them? Oh, see, I left a little piece in there. Okay, now, last week we played with the GG stickers. And in those packages where we dotted everything, you had so much of this, so much of it that we even gave you an extra sheet of, of, of the design stickers so you could play with it. But you're gonna be able to take these and use these here. Absolutely, why not? Let's see, if I take my green, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull my backing off just so I can see it. So I'm just gonna pull my backing off because 
for me, it is easier to see. For me, it's easier to see this than it is to see that. You decide what works best for you, but for me, it's easier to take the backing off. What other colors do I want? The blue is pretty. Maybe the dark blue or the pink. I don't know. Let's just pull the backing off of them. If we use them, we use them. Now you could absolutely save this and use this for something and put it down on something and make something with it. Absolutely. And maybe Ooh. Maybe some of these underneath there and peel it off. Okay. All right, so I think I'm going to play with those and see what I get. Now using these are a piece of cake. They're just a sticker. That's all it is, is a sticker. You're going to take some tweezers and you're going to make these little guys stand up. How do you make that happen? You do a bend and snap. So I'm going to bend down to the side that I want. I want those. I want this line right here. I'm going to bend it and they are just going to snap right up in place. So if I wanted this line down here, I'd bend it and you'll see that they are just going to snap right up and make it easy to grab them so that I can come in and gosh, I even want those little ones. I can come in and start diamond dotting these. Don't know that they're, it's a diamond dot, but I can start dotting these with stickers and filling it in. And I just start laying them down. And then maybe a bigger one in the center. And I just start filling in my spaces. Anywhere I want my, my little green to be, you've got them. If you ordered from last week, you've got these on the, well, they're, we've started processing. Yes, we've started filling. So if you've got these from last week, you're going to have them soon enough. And you just start filling filling in. Flower, 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 leaf. And anywhere I see my leaf, I just start filling in. You have them, use them. You just start filling it in. Let's do some of the flowers. So those are pretty. Just bend and snap. Can I get that one in there? Yeah, I think I can. 
and I just start filling in my flowers. You've got lines and lines of them. Bend them up, snap them down, and away we go. So we don't have these for sale right now because these were last week. But I wanted to show you what more you can do with them. and you color by filling in. This is easy, it's relaxing. <laughs> That's for sure. Come on, snap it up. This one wants to snap from the bottom, okay. And you can be sitting in front of the TV, you can be sitting on an airplane, and if, you, oh, if you've got leftovers, now you've got a way to use them. Got a couple little rogue guys down here. And because you've got multiple sizes, you can fill it in with the sizes that work best. And I'm just going about and filling it on in. I need another row, I take another row. Yep. There we go. But these dots aren't the only way to fill in. Maybe you don't want a color. Maybe you want to add bling to it. Maybe you like the look of the bling. Maybe you love diamond dotting and this is how you're going to be able to do that kind of look with your cards. Maybe you like the dot and do's. Well, here you go. Look at how that's coming about, right? I'm just going to finish it up. And I'm not being precise. By the time you get it all done, it's a beautiful mosaic. And maybe you don't want to do every flower. Up to you. You have options. Up, oh, get down there. There we go. I just keep filling it on in. Okay, should I do this? Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Sorry. I'm here, it's here. Bend and snap and get them all up to attention and fill it in. And you can see how fast and easy it is. This is a no thought, just sit back and relax and go. Not a lot of contemplating here. Just have at it. Probably could have filled some of the spaces in with some of the really small. I've got little teeny tiny ones that I haven't really used yet. Just bend back. Snap up. And go. So this is using product that we used last week. Looks good. 
good, right? And then we could take maybe this guy here and put that in there. How cute is that? <laughs> that is um, so cute. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> but there's no right and there's no wrong. You just go. Many of you might already have something like this in your stash and you didn't get them last week. These are stickers. So they're flat, but they give you a great level of bling. Do I want anything in that in the centers? Look how cute is that? I love that. And I've got my little green ones for my leaves and I could just sit there and fill this whole thing in and make it look beautiful. It's so easy to do. And I can do it with the gold as well. Let's pull the tree. Let's pull the tree. This time I'm gonna do it with the gold and instead of using my little dots from Gigi, I think I'm going to use, I'll pull over the bling from Find It Trading. So I showed this last week. This is beautiful. The, the pictures online don't do it justice. The colors, the gradation of colors, I was using these earlier. They're beautiful. It's the images online, I wish they were better. They're just not. But I'm gonna use these. I showed them last week, but I didn't use them. And this week I am, look it. Look at the different gradations of color. I sure do hope the camera gets it. These are from Find It Trading. I wanna say they have 10 different packs. And we're gonna have them on sale this week too. Let me grab that and some of these so I have them. And let me put this one here for now. All right, so I'm gonna take and I'm gonna die cut my tree and I'm gonna use some of these. So let's die cut my tree maybe out of the gold. I've got a rogue blue sticker. And again, I'm going to not use a precision base plate just to see what happens. And I'm going to stick with my little medium plates. I'm going to start on the side. Send it on through and then do a rotate. And send it on through. And let's see if it cut. I have not been able to cut my dies without a precision base. Wow. And that's just awesome. Oh my gosh, I almost want to keep, look at that. You could put this on, I mean, that's just amazing how it sticks together. <laughs> I almost don't want to take it apart. <gasps> wow. All right. It gives you a totally different, it gives you almost like an embossing folder look, but it's not. Uh, 
Okay, tons of little curly cues in here. Come on. Doop, there we go. Maybe if I just try to pop them straight up, I can get them out easier. Pop it straight up and get it out. Pop it straight up and get it out. Come on, there we go. I can twist you back into shape. There we go. Tons of little curly cues. So it cut fine, it's just getting the curly cue out. The girls are like, ha ha, this is your revenge. <laughs> All my little bits and pieces just pop right out. Zoop, 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 zoop. Zoop, zoop. Sound effects required when you're popping out your little zoop, zoop. Okay, I think I've got most of the pieces out. Zoop, zoop. All right, that's what I'm left with. And let's toss. So this is where I'm at. Oh, I gotta put that little guy back together. There we go. There's the tree. Right, super cute. So let's do this one on white paper. This time I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my sticky dots because I want to get that down onto my white paper put it down give a good press all those sticky dots are going to transfer over Peel up. Oh, come on. That poor little guy. He's hanging on by a hair, but that's okay. That's all I need him to hang on by. And put it down. Yay! Okay. Just that fast and that easy. Now I can take my Find It Trading. Only I'm not gonna use tweezers. My, my first thought was, okay, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna pull each one of these up and I'm gonna lay them in and I'm gonna build it that way. But I'm not gonna use tweezers. The tweezers are a little hard with this Tweezers are amazing. You can go and you can do, and it's super fast when you're using the stickers, but when you're using the bling, the tweezers are a little a little more difficult. I'm gonna use the Marvi Yoshida bling tool. So this little thing is a rubber tip, and it's got, we carry the one that has both sides. So if you've got a little sequin or a little bling or something a little bit larger, it's rubber, and it picks up. It's got tack to it and it stays tacky forever. If it stops being tacky, that means that there's probably too much dust on it or some oils from your fingers. You just take a baby wipe, wipe them off, let it dry, and it's gonna be tacky again. This is a great little tool because you can go in and you can grab that bling and you can literally pick it up, move it to the side, and it sticks and I put it down in place where I want it. 
pick it up, move it to the side, and it sticks. This bling is self-adhesive. But if I were doing this with tweezers, that'd be a lot harder. Pick it up from the side, and it sticks. And I can start filling my tree trunk in. Pick it up from the side, and it sticks. And lay it down. Pick it up from the side, and it sticks. This is an amazing little tool that maybe you didn't know you could use with self-adhesive bling. And I just start filling in my tree trunk. And it is easy and it is fast and if I were doing this with tweezers I would be I would not be <laughs> I'd still be trying to lay my second one down but because you just pick it up literally just put it right on top push to the side and it's up lay it down where you want it to go you can move it around if you need to. And you're filling it in. I have never blinged anything so fast in my entire life. And you just start to fill in. So easy. Crazy, right? This little tool is an Oh Happy Day tool. Have you ever blinged so fast? Self-adhesive. Uh, all done for you. And because I've got so many colors on my little my little self-adhesive bling sheet. I don't have to go pull out another set of colors. I can just keep pulling from the same sheet to have multiple colors. Love how easy these are. So your choice, do you want the flat stickers? These are pretty. Do you want the bling? Do you have small bling already and you just need the tool? Did you know that there was a tool? I didn't know that there was a tool for years. When I found out that there was a tool that did this, people were like, um, I've had it for like 20 years. I'm like, well, it was new to me. <laughs> but we're not done. I have one more thing to show you. But I said I was gonna start out super easy and we did. Maybe. Maybe I take some of these, or what do I have that's already peeled back? I have some pink ones here. Oh, I have these pink ones here. Maybe I take these and I use these 
as centers if I want. <laughs> so cute. And I could take, look at all those beautiful greens. Ooh, and maybe I don't want to do my whole tree green. Maybe I just want to add a little bit of green here and there. Oh, come on. I got it on the back side. Come on, up and at them. that one and let's put it there okay there and that one and let's put it there and this one and let's put it there and this one and let's put it there and this one and let's put it there and maybe I want a lighter green over here and maybe I want a lighter green up here and maybe I want a lighter green over here Maybe I want a darker green right there, and a darker green right there, and a lighter green right there. And I'm just filling my tree in just where the little swirls are. Just where my cute little swirls, I'm putting my green. So I don't have too much green but it is a tree, right? And I put that one there. Maybe I want dark, dark green. And I put that one in there. And I put a dark, dark green over here. And I put a dark, dark green over here. Have you ever seen bling so fast? To me, it's crazy how quickly I can do this with my cute little tool. Now this is probably a hand me card. You would have to, if you're gonna mail this, you're gonna have to put some bubble wrap over the top of it so that the bling doesn't break through the envelope. Have I missed a bling anywhere? Look at how cute that's becoming. Right? So cute. And I'm just pushing my bling in. And doing my flowers. I'm not gonna bling the whole tree unless I, I mean, if you want to, you can. But the little curly cues were meant to be able to just add a little touch of this and a little touch of that. And one, Two, one, two. Look at how fast and simple is this. Now I could go back, so let's put this one, I've got this one, and we did this one, and we did this one. I could go back to this. Since I've got those open, what if I went back to this one? Remember we did this one in the beginning? 
right? Do we want it on white or do we want it on black? Oh, we did we did the tree on white, yeah. We did the tree on white. So I'm gonna do this one on black. So let me get my sticky dots out again. And let's put it down. Rub, rub, rub. down and depending on what I want to do Look at how crazy easy is this. Well, oh, didn't pick it up. Now I'm coloring in, I'm dotting. Maybe I don't want to do the tops. Maybe I just want to do the, the bottoms of those flowers just to add a little something something to them. To the side and pick up. I can see why SMS girl Elena said she was doing while well, she was making her samples. She got into a rhythm of this and she actually had to stop. <laughs> she would just kept going and going and going because it was just so easy to do. I'll put that one back down. Pick it up again. There we go. So I love that the Find It Bling has multiple colors on the same sheet. I love the size of them because they're perfect little accents. And I love that they pick up just perfect. So here, we left it gold and we went in and we just played. And here we went all the way back to the beginning and came back in and added. But we're not done. We have one more thing to do. So I'm going to put those there. And I'm going to move these over here so I have them. And we're going to do one more thing. And this time we're going to play with, with watercolor pencils. Last week we played with colored pencils. This week it's all about watercolor pencils. And there is a difference. Last week we played with Gamsol and we made the pencil move. It was wonderful. This time we're going to play with watercolor pencils. When really watercolor pencils, it's kind of, well, it's kind of a misnomer, kind of. You don't get your pencil wet unless you're doing kind of a tip to tip blending, which I typically don't do. But let's see, I've got my watercolor pencils here. And so I've got a 36 pack in front of me. We're using the Brunzeal. So I used Brunzeal colored pencils last week. This week, 
it's the Brunzel watercolor pencils. And I'm only going to use 100 pound paper. I'm not going to use watercolor paper. Let's grab some 100 pound paper and I want to show you I want to show you how they work. So, um, so let's just grab one. And let's scribble, scribble, scribble. So they look very much like a colored pencil. I mean, you get the same look. Last week I did that only then I took the Gamsol and I moved Gamsol with it and I made it smooth out. With watercolor pencils, you're going to use water to make that happen. But I'm not gonna put water directly onto my pencil. I'm gonna put water Either you have a little cup with some water in it, whether you put a little cup with some water in it, or you just do it straight onto your craft mat, up to you. Yes, water. But I'm gonna take that water and I'm gonna change this from a pencil into a paint. So it moves a lot farther than a colored pencil with Gamsol. Colored pencil with Gamsol isn't going to, you're not going to be able to paint with it. It's going to soften that wax up in the pencil and give it a smooth appearance. Watercolor pencils you, you can paint with. They will allow you to do uh, whole backgrounds and things like that. So if I were to take that and then I were to take that so a little bit of red a little bit of yellow I come in I wonder if I've got that clean we're just gonna go for it and I just move it around They're super, super easy to work with. If I want that to have more of an orange look to it in the middle, I put my colors a little closer together. I'm gonna take my yellow and take my yellow right up into my red. And when those two colors meet, they're gonna make an orange. So a little bit softer on my on my blend. But these are crazy easy to use. They are not colored pencils and I really don't want to get my tip. Now if I'm going to get my tip wet It's because I'm gonna pull my color straight from my tip. If that's what I'm looking to do and pull my color straight from my tip, you can get your tip wet. But if you're going to get your tip wet and then come in and think that that's what a watercolor pencil does, no. Or if you're gonna to want to try and blend this out, because that tip is wet, it's gonna be impossible for me to blend out those scratches. So if you're doing a straight from the tip to your paintbrush, go right ahead. But if you're doing straight to your paper, you need to keep your pencil dry. So I'm gonna put that one away because I don't wanna use that one. Although if you, okay, so let's do this one here. Let's grab this. 
and let me wipe off my brush. Okay, so I've got my red pencil again. And I'm not using the point. I'm using the side to lay some color down. And if I need to, unfortunately, we are sold out of the pencil sharpeners. As soon as more are available, I'll make them available. But I'm going to come in on my side. Wet. And then I can start to paint. Now, what if I wanted it darker somewhere? Maybe I wanted this color more intense somewhere. I can't come with my pencil and add more color because my paper is wet. It's just like getting your pencil wet again. It's going to leave scratch marks. So what do I do about that? Well, you come in with another piece of paper and make that your palette. And I put some of my pencil down. I add a little bit of water. I pick up the color and then I can come lay more color down. While your paper is wet, you don't want your pencil to touch it. Super important. These are colored watercolor pencils, not traditional colored pencils. Color pencils we use with Gamsol, watercolor pencils we use with a paintbrush. So now what are we going to do with them today? Well, it all has to do with the the foil mirror <laughs> paper <laughs> from Spellbinders. I'm going to cut two. I'm going to cut a gold and a silver. So my gold I'm going to do out of my owls. So my next little die are my cute little whimsical owls. So they're not, they're cute-ish, but they're not juvenile-ish, I don't think. I think if you gave this to anybody of any age, they would love the card. So I'm going to cut it out of gold on my owls, and I think I'll cut my butterflies out of the silver. So let's bring my, there you go, let's bring my plates back on over and my machine back on over and I'm just going to keep with my medium plates. I like having multiple sizes. I'm, I, I'm liking that. I thought it was a super good idea. I really did. I just want you to have two of each so that you can have a do not cut plate and a cut plate in every size and that way it's easier for you to send it through. Sometimes putting a smaller plate on top with a larger plate on the bottom is difficult to cut because that smaller plate pushes back when you're trying to send it through. I'm going to do a rotate because it seems that the last ones needed it. And away we go. These are brand new. They haven't launched anywhere else. See, I just don't know. I'm not sure if the, my little, I'm gonna send it through one more time. One more time and just see if my, just to be sure. do a whole rotate and send it on back. Well, I see that piece fell out just fine. <laughs> 
Yeah, see that looks better. And then I'm going to pop it out. And all my little bits and pieces. are going to fall out. All right, my cute little owls are cute little owls. Lots of little curly cues. go. Alright, so let me get rid of all of that. And while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and cut the silver in the butterflies. And then we're going to mount them down to a piece of paper. And we're going to use watercolor pencils. And you're like, what do you mean mount them down to a piece? Well, I'm going to sticky dot them down. And then we're going to play. So there are my little owls looking at you. Haven't got all the little pieces out, but good enough for right now. Let's cut the let's cut the butterflies out of silver. So we're only selling the Spellbinders in a bundle. You get the gold and the silver. That means 20 sheets. They would retail $9.99. That's what they retail for. We're doing the bundle for $11.99. If you just want the gold or you just want the silver, I believe Spellbinders.com has them on their site for the $9.99. little big. Cut it down. And then I'm going to flip it and rotate. And let's see how big of a thump I get. Ready? Oh, not bad. What about at the end? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, not bad. All right, I'm going to do a rotate, send it back through. And I haven't used my full size plates yet. Let's take a look. I think right there it needs a, a, just a little bit more. If I had used a precision base plate, I would be done, but I didn't. I wanted to see if I could get it done without I think that looks better let's give it a whirl Oh my gosh, it's cute just like that. Leaving all the little pieces in. Try and wiggle these guys out. And wiggle these guys out. Small, small, small. Come on, out you go. All right. 
Well, I haven't got it all out, but I think we'll be good enough for you to get to see the technique. Come on. Put out, out. There we go. And then it gets stuck into another one. Blah, ha, 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 ha. All right. See if I get my my mess off my table, and then maybe I can just pop some of these out. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Zoop, 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 and get all the little pieces out of my little flowers. right out and my little flowers and we'll adhere it to a piece of paper and I'm going to use white paper this time because we're going to be doing water coloring so if I use black paper well the water color is a transparent color and it's going to get lost inside that black you'll never see it and I'm going to use hundred pound paper if you use watercolor paper, you're going to get a much more vivid, different result. I'm using 100 pound paper because that's what I think most of you probably have 80 pound, 100 pound in your crafty arsenal, and you may not have watercolor paper. So I'm going to use something that I think most of you have readily available and don't have to go out and buy something additional too. Watercolor paper is always going to give you a beautiful result. And almost any craft store will sell watercolor paper. So visit your craft stores. I'm sure that they'll have something for you if you want to play on watercolor paper. Your colors will be a little more vivid. They'll be more intense. They will um, move a little bit better and a little bit longer. They'll blend a little easier. But 100 pound paper works great for what I'm doing. There. Okay, so I've got my butterflies. And I've got my owls. Let's mat them down onto some white paper. So again, I'm going to grab my sticky dots. I'm still using the exact same sheet I started with. Lay it down, close it up. Pull it up. Oh, I did. I sticky dotted the wrong side. <laughs> okay, so how many of you have done that? But you know what? I'm going to go with it. <laughs> sticky dot. But this is two sided. <laughs> so I'm just going to go with it. We're just going to put that side down. Because this is double sided, <laughs> we're just going to go with it. Now, if that was traditional mirror paper, it would be white and I would be done and I'd have to recut. But it wasn't traditional mirror paper and it's not white and I don't have to recut. This time, let's put it down so it's right. <laughs> okay, well, see? We just fix it, we just go with it. Don't be sad, don't be frustrated, don't throw it. Do not throw it away. I'm gonna make sure I got plenty of dots on the bottom and on my, I'm gonna 
to move it over and do it one more time just to make sure that I got plenty of dots going on. Well, now you absolutely know that there's no editing, no fast forwarding, no script. What you see in one of our YouTubes is what you get. If it isn't perfect, we roll with the punches. And I don't correct, well, I don't edit out my mistakes. Because how many times have you done that? But look at it, it's cute. I still got it, right? <laughs> All right. Super cute. So now I've got both. Now let's watercolor. So I think I'm going to start with my owls because I can. And I'm not going to take and put my watercolor pencil right in here. Now, if this was a colored pencil, I could use and I could go in, I could color a little bit in and use my Gamsol and my Stubby to pull that color out and fill it in. But this is not that. This is a watercolor pencil. So I want to paint it in. I could go in and add a little color here and there and pull the color out. I have that option to do that. So I could just put a little color here and a little color here and a little color there and some here and some there and some there. So I could go in and just add a little bit of color in all of those little spaces. Take my paintbrush, take my water. Paintbrush wet and make that into a paint. and just start coloring him in. But because I also have my foiled paper, I can also just be random and just go. Let's say I take, let's take this one and I put some here. And I pick up some paint here. I can also just go in and because I'm working on foiled mirror paper, it resists the color. So if I just want to have at it and go in there and add some color, I'm coloring, I'm painting right on top of this gold. I'm not being polite about it. I'm not being careful about it. I'm just adding my color and painting right on top of that gold outline because I can, because that foil paper resists the water, resists the color, and will let me go in and add color without even thinking about it. I can just go in so if I was doing his little face, I could add, oh, got it all over there. I could add a little bit more here. A little water there. And again, I'm not going to be overly thoughtful about it. I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to go over my whole little owl. And I'm just going to fill in all the little spaces with the paint. And I don't have to worry about that gold because it's going to resist my watercolor. But I still get to be specific where I put my color. So I'm not trying to paint the background and then line my die up to match what colors I want the owls to be. No, 
I just go right in here and add some color and let's add some color over there so let's get a little here and maybe a little bit of that first color I had and a little bit of water and I'm just gonna go in there and paint right over the top and I'm even blending those two colors blending them right here I've made that little piece of paper my palette and I can go in I'm using the side of my brush or I'm sorry the side of my pencil I'm not using the tip And I can just add, and the less water I use, the stronger my color will be concentrated on my paper. So if I use very little water on my brush, I'm gonna have a very dark image. It's The paint is gonna be very dark, and that's where I wanna maybe go in and do some shadowing and some highlights. But it doesn't, you still have the reflectiveness from the gold. The gold resists. So easy to do. Let's do some of the leaves. So let's start with let's start with let's start here. And you're like, oh that's a big palette, Stacy. I know. And let's go here. And maybe I just cover the whole thing in a light green. Oh, maybe I cover the whole thing in a light blue. What if I do that? What if I come in? And I add some blue. just get some blue everywhere even if I get it in my my owl I do my whole whole background with some blue that gold is going to resist all this blue and all that green and all that brown and I'm going to go right over that green with my blue So no rhyme, no reason, just kind of get it in there and move it along. And my, there we go. Now I've got a whole background. 
and I don't care. Well, you know what? I'm going to add a little more blue and try and move out some of that green. Right over. There. Blue sky. Went right over my gold. Now I can come back. New piece of paper. Now I can come back with my green. Now I was using this green here. Maybe I can come back with my green. And my brush. And my water. Ooh. And pick it up. Now I can come in and just color my green. I've already got a blue background going. And I just come in and paint my green. And I'm just making a palette out of my color. Do I want it a little darker? Okay. So I'm not giving a whole lot of thought. I'm not worried about, is it perfect? Yes, of course it is, you made it. That's what makes it perfect. And because I've got this specialty paper, from Spellbinders, it resists all this water I can be specific where I put my color. I can paint super fast. Let's go in there and let's do the owl again. So let's finish my other owl and let's do him in some, oh, that's blue, no blue. Let's do them in some black, maybe some black. And some of my brown. And some water. I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna add some black to him. And again, I'm not being really thoughtful. I'm just going over the whole image. So I get some color over his whole body. And it's going on top of the gold. It's going around the gold. But the gold is resisting. So now I've got them in a little bit of black, light gray there. Go back in, grab some of my brown. Now throw some brown over the top of him. and just go. Putting your die down first when you have a paper or a, 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 a paper that resists makes coloring so simple, so easy. Oh, should have done it the other way. Some here. And some there and add my water to it. A 
I've got blends going on over here. And I'm using white copy or white paper because that way I see my colors. If I was to do this on my craft mat, first off, my pencil won't go to my craft mat. Won't. And I need to see what colors I'm working with. So I just do it on white paper and make white paper my palette. Oh, they're cute little bird. Oh, cute, cute, cute. Little orange for their nose. Little black for their eyes. And in no time at all, you're watercoloring. It's so easy. Oh, let's put him over here. Let's do another one. Let's move this one over and let's work on this one. So a new palette. And let's do some, let's try this blue. Hold it out so I remember which blue I used. <laughs> and a little bit of water. And I'm just going to do my whole blue background. Right over my silver. Now I'm going into my butterflies a little bit. Yeah, I know. That's okay. I just want a nice blue background. I want it to have that watercolory look. So it's not the same everywhere. I've got some highs and some lows, a little darker here, a little lighter there, right over my silver paper. I'm not being thoughtful at all about where I'm getting my color. I'm using tons of water. All right, I think that's pretty good. So I've got a background going. What if I added some green to the bottom? and it's just totally resisting. The silver is completely resisting the green. So my green is only adhering where my paper is.
If I want a little deeper green, maybe I want that bottom to have more of a green to it. Just come in here, put some down and use less water when you pick it up and your color will be more intense. Less water, the more pigmented your color is. More water, the softer, more muted your color is. Okay, so I've got a nice little watercolor going on there. Now it's the fun part. Now it's what do you want those butterflies to look at? Now it's the easy part. Now it's the easy part. Now I just go in and again, not being overly thoughtful, but staying inside my lines of my butterfly, I just start to add color. And because, oh, I got a little bit of there, there, wipe it off. Because I had some blue onto my butterfly already, where I'm adding this color, it's changing it almost to a, a purple. Bam. I could add some purple to the bottom. Purple, purple, purple. Let's see what color this is. And just go in there and just throw it down. And that silver paper is completely resisting. And maybe I want some more of the pink. And those two colors are going to marry together. They're going to do their own blending. And I'm just painting right over the silver. It, it really is just that simple. Let's see if this blue is dry now. right over and then let's do that pink again So if you say you're not a good colorer, well, you see, you don't really have to be. You just got to let yourself be free and go. 
and do. And let the paint do the work for you. And the dyes do the work for you. It's like you have a coloring book here. And you're just coloring. Before you know it, you didn't do anything hard. And I only used 100 pound paper. And these are watercolor pencils. And before you know it, look at what you've made. Right? Before you know it. And I even put this one on backwards. And now this one's had a time to dry just a little bit. I could grab Hello my green bling. How are you today? And my Hello my lovely little easy peasy picker. And I could add some bling. Oh, not there, there. Let's move that one up just a little bit. And I could just add a few little things here and there on some of my leaves. I could come in with my browns I mean have you ever seen bling so easy just a few little places I could come in with my browns and I could add a few little I could do the I could do the little branches if I wanted to in bling or I could add a little bling to my owl It really doesn't get any easier than this. So you could sit there. I mean, Elena did. 
She sat there all day and blinged. When you see her samples, you will see what I'm saying. But it's so easy to do, and it's so fast. And that the jewels are already self-adhesive. And you can bling them up. Go in there. Bling them up. But we started, we started so simple. We started way, way, way at a time long ago <laughs> where we did that just with markers. So I did this one a little earlier with just markers. Just the Bix or the Sharpies or the Couture Creations $1.99 markers. But then we took that and we went to here by adding a little bit of bling to it. And we did that by not coloring it all and adding bling to it. But we did this using our little dots from the Gigi product that we had. But then we came in and we watercolored because the watercolor resists the paper. It's a specialty foil mirror paper and you can just put that ink, that watercolor paint all over it and it just, it just beads right off that silver. But then, I mean, there's a world of things to be done and none of this was difficult. All of this was achievable. And we played with the new Sizzix mats where we're going to give you your, the only way we're selling them is in a two pack. That's it. That way you get two of the large, which are your standard cutting plates, two of your mediums and two of your smalls. Love them. Great idea to have multiple sizes. You just should have, I, I would have hoped that they would have been in packs like this so that you get two of everything, but okay, we're just going to make it that way. We're just going to make it happen. And again, the, well, let me show you what's, okay, so, so what's on sale? So first off, we've got watercolor, the watercolor pencils. I've got my 36 pack here in front of me. Um, that's got a ton of stuff on top of it. Let me see if I can get it out. It's missing half its colors now because I've used them. <laughs> so I've got the 36 pack with pencils literally everywhere. These are Brunzil watercolor pencils. So we've got the 36 pack, we've got the 24 pack, and we have a 12 pack. Not colored pencils, you don't use them with Gamsol, you use them with water. Then we have what we had on sale last week. I have all of the bling from Find It love the bling. I believe there's 10 colors. There's an I want it all. You saw, you saw just how, oh my gosh, easy peasy. What other color? It can't get any easier than side down, side down, side down. So, I mean, that is crazy. You can, what, it, what a simple, easy way to add your bling. This tool is important by Marvi Yoshida. So the bling will be on sale. The Marvi Yoshida tool will be on sale. The two pack 
will be on sale. The paper is sold as a bundle only. It's like the it's like the the plates from Sizzix. They retail for $9.99 each. You get 10 sheets. I'm doing $11.99. Gets you both colors. Okay. And then we have the dies. So the collection is called Outlined in Beauty. I think I cut all of them. So we gave you flowers and we gave you um, snowflakes. So if you wanted to make this a winter tree, you absolutely could. So I think I die cut everything so you could see everything. And then I know I did these two. This was the first one I did and I just colored it on the gold. This one was the last one I did and I watercolored it straight onto the paper with the silver and the silver resisted the watercolor. And then the owls I did with the watercolor and the floral I did by using the Gigi bling and just filling it in, man. <laughs> okay, so there are six dies. The I Want It All special on the dies is $59.99. It's always $59.99. I'm hoping I can continue to hold my price at $59.99. They are all A2 in size, which means you get six A2 dies for, and they're $9.99 each. That's a, There just isn't anybody that beats that value. There just isn't. If you just love one, that's okay. They're $13.99. That's still an amazing value. If you're gonna buy four of them, you might as well get the six because you're gonna pay about the same price. And they are limited, they are one and done. When they are gone, they are gone. All right, samples. Let's start with Belinda. So I showed you this one in the beginning. Super cute, right? And here she just cut it out of glitter and she just added a little bit of those rhinestones just sporadically here and there, not too much, not too little. And here she used alcohol ink markers on glittered paper. And I love that she left negative space. I love that there's the white behind it. Lovely Belinda. Love and hugs back to you. <laughs> Love and hugs back to you. Then I'm going to go to Doris. And look at Doris's owls. Are they so cute? No. Okay. I always, ch oh, she put little. Okay. Here's the tree that I showed you in the beginning. And then she has finished it off with a sentiment. And then I have here, look at, isn't that beautiful? All paper pieced together. And then here's Doris's butterflies. And then we open. And then she used glitter paper. She left negative space. She just did a simple background. And then we open. And Doris made a winter tree. We gave you the snowflakes to add to the tree. She cut it in winter colors. We gave you the, I mean, yeah, it's darling. You get two snowflakes to make it a winter tree or a couple flowers to make it a floral tree. And then we open. So she made it a winter tree because it's an all season tree. Trees should be all season. And then we have beautiful, so soft and so elegant. Am I supposed to open? No. Ha ha ha. Okay. <laughs> so that is Doris. Then we move to Elena. And remember, I told you Elena got into a rhythm. 
Hello. She just filled it all in. At some point she said I had to stop, but it was so easy to put them in. It just was simple. So this is Elena. Oh, right? Amazing. Look at this one. She left the gold foil in and then outlined around it. This is Elena. Holy smokes artichokes. Same here. She left the foil in and then just added bling. And look at her birdhouse. Right? Amazing, Elena. Amazing. And last I have, did I show you this one? Look at her owls and where she added the bling. Love, love, love. Yeah, that's Elena. No. Yeah, Elena. <laughs> okay, and then I have Claire. And again, just a touch of bling here and there. And look at her butterflies. So totally different look. Ready? Okay, so here we have butterflies. Here we have butterflies. Same dye. Totally different look. This is Claire. And look at her little owls. I love them. <laughs> And here she left the tree basically whole. She picked a pattern paper that she really liked and then she used the little flowers that we give you to go with the tree and some of the negative pieces. Kind of a folksy tree. And here is her beautiful, beautiful tree house. Or not tree house, birdhouse. <laughs> birdhouse. Oh, and then she made her owls into kind of fall. Oh, look at that. Oh, those are great. And then her flowers on glitter paper and colored in with alcohol ink markers. And last but not least, I have two layouts. I have one from Claire. Let me back it on up. One from Claire where we've got the die cuts and she's layered them and mixed the colors. You've got the bottoms of the butterfly, so the little flowers. A few more florals up there. Just a beautifully simple, elegant, very pretty layout. And then we have Elena's. And again, Elena had fun with the bling. You look up bling there on the bottoms and the flowers. You've got bling up here, home sweet home. Look at the major decal she did with the flowers and all the bling. This is Elena and her layout, which screams, ooh, look at me, I sparkle. <laughs> Okay, you guys. Oh my gosh. Well, we started out simple. I said we would. We started out super simple that I think everybody, no matter who you are, can do. And we just got, we just built on it. 
It all works together and the dies the dies give you opportunity to use product that you already have in your stash because of the way that they were meant to do that. I designed them with the thought of being able to fill them in with pretty little things. And um, and when the GG YouTube happened, I'm like, oh, this is gonna work out great. The dies were already done. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. And the Find It Trading Bling was perfect. And then when the Spellbinders paper came about, it's like, wow, this is great. When do you ever get a specialty paper that's two-sided? amazing and resists water and you can color it with your alcohol inks it it dices it slices <laughs> but wait <laughs> all right you guys you're gonna find all of this stuff on our online store scrapbooking made simple scrapbooking made simple.com yes you can come into our retail store and purchase it we have it available in our retail store at, as well Remember, everything is limited, especially the dies, um, so they're one and done. And if you are coming in retail and you just wanna give us a call and place your order over the phone, you have to be able to come pick it up. We can't take online orders over the phone, but we can we can take retail orders because they literally go and shop in our retail store as they're on the phone with you and pull your order and put it in a bag while we're on the phone with you. So um, anything, the colored pencils, doesn't have, or the watercolor pencils doesn't have to be Brunzel. They're really great watercolor pencils, don't get me wrong. But if you have some, use those first. Or if you have a local independent craft store, visit them first. I bet they've got watercolor pencils for you or they'll order them for you. Yes, if they've got bling, find some bling there. Is find it's really nice? Yes, because you get that gradation of color. Beautiful. But if you've got bling or they've got bling, shop with them. The, the dies, you're kind of stuck getting them here with me. And right now we've got an amazing price on that Spellbinders paper and we are the only ones to have the Sizzix plates. So shop where you can locally and then come online for the things you can't get there. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I hope you had a good time today. I will see you all next week. Bye.